Good morning. My name is David Kay. I did this. I'm the contract uh, exhibits curator for Tucson Botanical Gardens. And uh, this is one of my latest creations. We're going to visit with Roberto Burley Marx today and try and get everyone reinterested in him, get him over here, and look at his inspired garden. And when the gallery is open, hopefully you'll all come back and take a look at what's going on inside. I did a uh, Google search this morning, punched in Roberto Burley Marx, and in eight tenths of a second, I had 1.25 million hits. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about him. Uh, that's your first challenge. Get educated on Roberto, as I will now call him, because now that I know him, he's a really great guy. And uh, what I want to do is let him speak his way through this five minutes, largely like I did instead of writing a lot of text for the exhibit. Uh, I'm going to start out with Roberto Burley Marx as a household name for most of us. So back in the 1960s, two people in, uh, South, in Rio de Janeiro were talking about him. One had no idea who he was. And it's a pretty good quote, and I think most Americans would feel this way, too. The landscape gardener. Well, you might have heard of him. He's lectured at Harvard. And he's called the modern Lenotre, who's the French landscape architect who designed Versailles gardens. Uh, and I think he's one of the real Brazilian geniuses, Roberto Burley Marx. Well, that kind of explains Roberto and uh, his reputation outside of South America. He, uh, he did over 3,000 commission projects, everywhere from Malaysia to uh, Miami Beach. Miami, actually, downtown. He uh, designed the streetscape along Biscayne Boulevard. And uh, so he really is a famous guy, but no one here knows very much about him. So this is actually an, ex an exciting uh, opportunity for Tucsonans to catch up with him. I, I want to move on to what I feel is the most important part of this exhibit, and it's the fact that Roberto was an explorer. We're speaking of 20th century Brazil, and it's like the Wild West. It's it's like the Australian outback. It's like everywhere that seems remote and dangerous. And Roberto would go out on plant collecting trips. In, uh, in one quote, he, he says, I'm not a chauvinist, but Brazil has more than 50,000 species of indigenous plants. So I want to use all of those in my garden and park designs. I don't need to leave the country. Well, he did. He traveled all over the Andes as well, Peru and Colombia and Ecuador, looking for plants to take back to his studio and his estate, which was in a rubber plantation. And uh, he propagated everything on site for his garden. So when you ordered a Roberto Burley Marx garden, you got something really unique. He also, for rooftop gardens, oftentimes used crushed rock, but he'd only use Brazilian rock because he was just that kind of guy. He'd drive, he had a Volkswagen minivan, uh, he'd take boats, he'd hire canoes, he'd take river boats, he'd fly when necessary. I, I love this quote. He and, he and his travel buddies are going to a uh, little-known area about 500 miles north of Brasilia, out in the middle of nowhere. And this is what he has to say about it. In 1946, I traveled to a little-known area inhabited by the then uncivilized Zavantes, who refused contact with the whites for fear of catching their diseases fearing also that they would lose the right to roam the forests of which they felt themselves the rightful owners. From the small plane in which we flew over the banks of, of the river they were flying along, 
they could see the village and the Indians who were shooting at their plane with their arrows. Uh, must have been quite an experience. We reached the outpost surrounded by dangers, Indian ambushes, snakes, fire ants, hairy spiders always on the defensive, and scorpions, all a part of the constant tension of the traveler in search of adventure. However, when we began to see the wonders of nature, we forgot our fears. He was out looking for plants, being shot out, shot out with arrows by the indigenous population only made the plants that much more valuable in his mind. Uh, he survived. He didn't die until the mid-1990s, as a matter of fact. Again, this, this trip in which the airplane was arrowed was in 1946, and we're still talking about uncivilized tribes in far off, distant, remote places, and he's there looking for plants to propagate. He oftentimes traveled with botanical artists. He liked their company. They didn't mind sitting for extended periods of time while he went off and picked flowers and dug up little seedlings and stuff like that. They, they would uh, sit and paint pictures of gorgeous flowers, and Roberto is always out looking for a new color, a new color, a new texture, and how I want to spend the rest of my time is looking at some of his influences. This is a very simplified version of a rooftop garden that Roberto designed for one of the government departments, education and culture, I believe. And if you look at it, you can see all kinds of things. What I see is the Amazon River. It's something he would have seen from an airplane. It's something he would have seen from a boat. Uh, the river was his inspiration, one of his major inspirations. The, the play of sunlight on the ink black water of the Rio Negro looks like this. The oxbow cut off bends in, in the Amazons and tributary rivers looks like this. Everything he did had a natural counterpart. So here we are, we've turned 90 degrees in the Legacy Gallery and we've walked probably 15 feet. I wanted to show you this picture specifically. I've got no idea what it is. To me, it looks like a yucca with big marshmallows stuck on all the spines. This is the kind of thing early Marx would bring back. He'd haul it back, fill a van with it, fill a boat, propagate it, grow his own marshmallow yuccas. And uh, he, he, he found joy in everything when he was out in nature. He visited all of Brazil's biogeographical provinces during his trips. He traveled around Brazil for probably 30 years whenever he had the opportunity. More inspiration. Not all of Brazil is jungle. The river flows red in the Conga. It's kind of a savanna environment. The river flows black on the Rio Negro. It flows white elsewhere. The colors were amazing, and the plants that he passed by were amazing as well. When I was doing this exhibit, and I was trying to figure out what his inspiration had been for his more iconic designs, this one here became a real problem. I couldn't figure it out. Searched high and low all over Brazil, all over the Andes, every picture I could find. The closest I could come up to was the design and size done a model souvenir dugout canoe made by the Shipibo Canibo tribe at the headwaters of the Amazon in Peru. So everywhere he went, can't state it too much. And this is where your next challenge comes in. When you visit the gardens, even though you can't come in to this gallery, when you come to the gardens, 
Try and look at the plants, look at the rocks, look at everything that's here. The way Roberto would have looked at it. Turn the leaves over, look at it, pick up a rock, just make sure you put it back. Have fun with it. Try and figure out how Roberto was thinking the process through. When he designed gardens, when he made hand-painted tile murals, when he did printmaking, when he designed a theater set or a costume. That's the important part. And he, he got inspiration from everything. He even, he even was inspired by the underside of the giant lily pad, which he reintroduced to coastal Brazil as a uh, dominant feature in water gardens, in uh, botanical gardens, and public parks. Okay, and I'm going to leave you in this gallery, and uh, hopefully it's been inspiring enough to you to actually come and visit, not just once to see the outside, to see the Roberto-inspired garden that's been created here. But also, ultimately, when the indoor galleries we open, reopen, we have two galleries on Roberto and his art and his designs and his life. And since I offered up the idea, he even got inspiration from the bottom side of a lily pad. I have a picture and I'll show it to you and I'll leave you with that. Happy traveling, stay safe. Don't forget to visit the gardens. <laughs>